I'm late, so let's get into some shite. Hey, friends, how are you? I am so late. Uh, what does that mean, by the way, to you uh, when I say I'm late? I was watching a movie, The Lords of Flatbush. That's, do you know this movie? Uh, back in the, uh, I'm going to say, it's a 70s, early 70s movie. Uh, very first movie, I guess, big movie starring Sylvester Stallone. And uh, Henry Winkler was also in it. They play um, their, their high school kids. Winkler and Sylvester Stallone are high school kids. You know, it's like the T-Birds in Greece with John Travolta, uh, 30-year-old high school kids. Uh, so, yeah, they're, um, they're just high school kids hanging out. And um, Stallone, Stallone's character, let's say, uh, gets his girlfriend pregnant. I don't even know if it's his girlfriend. A girl. Let's say a girl gets her pregnant. And the way she tells him is, um, I think his name is Chico. No, it's not Chico. I can't remember what his name is, but she says, I'm late. And he's like, late for what? Late for what? What are you late for? I don't know what you're late for. Yo, Adrian, what are you late for, Adrian? Um, and, and then she's like, I'm late. My friend is late. Do people talk like that anymore? My friend is late. Um, so when I say I'm late, I'm not telling you that you've knocked me up. Please understand. I don't mean that. You and I are just friends. We, we're not doing that right now. I uh, I was supposed to have a show on uh, Monday. And uh, I got, I'm sorry. I got s stuff happened as it always does. And I just couldn't, I couldn't get behind the mic. So uh, today I did a Thursday show, which is supposed to be an interview show. There's no interview today. I don't, I don't want to uh, do an interview like this. Can I do it? Uh, have you seen the uh, documentary Sly? It's about S Sylvester Stallone. It's on, I think it's on Netflix. Uh, you know what? Not bad. I, um, I got to admit, I'm kind of a, a Stallone fan. I'm not like a later, like, when he started milking everything for, you know, he's doing like Rocky 25 or whatever. I, I, I'm not against that. As if people like it, they want to keep going. Okay. The man can make as much money as he wants. It's his characters. It's his stuff. Do it. Um, but I loved the first Rocky. It was one of my favorites. And um, Rocky 2, I loved even more. And uh, they started losing me on three. Really, really lost me on four. And five, I was ready to punch him. I just gave up. Although the last Rocky, what was it called? Uh, the Italian Stallion? I don't remember. The last Rocky, Rocky Six. I don't, I don't, it had another name and I can't remember now. Rocky Balboa, that was it. It was Rocky Balboa. That was a good movie. They, they kind of came around, not as much fighting. It was, a, it was about story. So I did like that. But the uh, documentary is good. And you get to have some insight on um, his life. They do. They actually interview Henry Winkler, too. So um, pick up on it if you can. If you're a Stallone fan, uh, do it. Uh, I'm a little, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little bit in a pissy mood today. Going to try not to take it out on you. I'm going to try not to be pissy. My voice is gone. <clears throat> What's happening? <clears throat> I have some hot coffee here. Hold on. I don't think it's helping. Um, it's, it's Atlanta. In Atlanta, February 1st is um, spring. It's spring. We're in springtime. I'm about to, I'm sweating. I'm wearing a, a hoodie and I'm sweating. I went out. It's like spring today. Um, trees and flowers are budding and uh, already allergies are starting to happen. So I apologize. I'm kind of pissy. I did go out. Didn't I? I just had to do one thing. Here's the thing about Atlanta. I've said it before. If you want to go out to do anything, add one hour to whatever it is you want to do. Whatever your estimation is, what you want to you want, just add an hour, right? You want to go next door? You want to drive out and go next door? It's going to take you ten minutes to come back. No, no. 
it's going to take you an hour and 10 minutes just to go next door. So I had to go out and it just complicated. I, I had like two or three places. They were all really close by, but that's like the entire morning uh, th here because it's just, I think it's the way people drive in Atlanta. If you've never been to Atlanta, if you're on the high, if you're on the interstate, you're driving on the interstate, everybody drives 150. If you're on the roads, they drive two. It It's two. I you might think I'm exaggerating. I clocked it. I had I pulled over a cop. He was sitting on the I, I I motioned him. I pulled him over. I said, "Excuse me, officer. I know you're here to serve and protect, and uh, I would like for you to serve me. I really would like to know how fast these drivers are going, and um, would you mind clocking them for me with your little clocker?" And the officer said, uh, "Sure, citizen. I'd be happy to do that for you." And uh, aimed his little clocker at the uh, several drivers, and he said, two. They're going two. So it's been, uh, it has been, um, I, I feel like I have the uh, official numbers. Okay, I'm going to calm down. It just, I don't know, it takes me a little while to see. It would have been better if I just hadn't, if I just didn't even do a show, Right? No, I, I, I like I like um, hanging out with you guys. Got to do it once a week. I had dinner with Sherry Brown this week. Yeah, you remember Sherry, who uh, uh, we, my my podcast host. Um, this epic disaster, um, 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 life in a kill podcast, and we didn't talk for a year and a half. We didn't speak. We were mad. We were mad at each other, like grownups get mad. Mad. That was stupid. I don't really know. She thought I was mad at something. I thought she was mad at something. And then we talked. And it wasn't we, nothing. Why don't people talk more? Anyway, we just decided maybe we, maybe we just needed a break from each other for a year and a half. And um, we caught up and uh, we had uh, Japanese food. Kind of good. Uh, and chatted. It was fun. We still make each other laugh. Uh I forced her to watch some videos. She uh, played some video song. Uh, she said, you need to watch this. You need to listen to this songs. The, this this band. We do that when we get together. We force each other to watch the things that we like. But it was cool. It was nice catching up and finding out what I missed in the um, year and a half that we didn't speak. Um, serious stuff and not so serious and told her some of my stuff and I don't even think she listened to me. I really don't. I don't think she ever listens to me. I did listen to her. I with com with compassion and attention as I always do. Uh but that was fun. It was it was kind of nice. I hadn't been out. We hadn't been out together, but I hadn't been out in that section of town for a little while, so I had a little Japanese food and um they didn't have what she wanted. The restaurant was out of lettuce. How how can you be out of lettuce? If you're a restaurant, you sh lettuce should be some. That should be like the first thing on your grocery list. Lettuce. You're and you're an, you're a Japanese restaurant. You can I get double lettuce. It's the weekend. You're gonna need lettuce. See, I told you I'm kind of pissy. All right, so here's some good news. I mentioned uh, this is last year. I mentioned this. I sent a, uh, my, I have a friend in the Philippines and uh, as her uh, Christmas present, birthday present I mailed out on October 15. I mailed her a little gift, small little gift, little uh, necklace I sent it, little, just in a little tiny thing. And uh, it took about a week and a half to get to the Philippines, which is great. And then the message, the tracking number just kept saying that it's it's in Manila. And it said that for weeks and weeks and weeks. So it went from October through November to December. And it just kept saying that. It never moved. It was stuck in the... And I just kind of assumed it was lost. So we both just kind of gave up on it. I was like, I'm sorry. I really tried. I wanted to get you something for Christmas, for your birthday. I, I apologize. It didn't get there. But I think we both kind of thought maybe one day <laughs> it'll just show up. Who knows? And, um, oh, guess what it did? 
it showed up. This past week, she sends me a, a message saying, look what showed up. And there it was. And I went, I checked the tracking number. It said it's still in Manila. The tracking number is broken. But at least it got to her, and that was great. I'm not going to mail her anything else ever again. If she wants anything from me, she's got to come here and pick it up. But that was frustrating. Uh, it took almost, well, over three months to get to her little hands. I, I, it's just crazy. But anyway, it's there now. Feeling good about it. How about you? You feeling good? Didn't even ask. Um, you, you know what? If, if, if you want, you could talk. You could chat with me. Just call me, 678-348-0008. That's our listener line. You just call that number, and you could talk to me, and I'll put it on the podcast. Like I always say I'll do, or you could text me. And then you can also send me an email. You know, I'm on Facebook. Our email, My email is rick at autotune.com, and you could just chat with me. You could give me some ideas of what you want to hear on the show. I'm always open for it. Um, another great thing that you can do, somebody did that this week, is um, uh, just repost or post about the podcast on your social media page, whichever one you choose. Just say, hey, give this podcast a listen. Then uh, let me know that you did it. Send me a mailing address and I will send you free stickers, out of tune podcast stickers. They're cool stickers. I got to tell you, I got one on my car. Uh, so uh, I'm sending some out this week for someone who did that and I appreciate it. I appreciate everyone who does that. I'm going to tell you a story here in a minute. Um, and the story is about how I almost got thrown out of Mexico, the country of Mexico. I almost got thrown out. Uh, but first, before I tell you that story, Oh, we got a little bit of news here. You like my little news thing? That's right. Here we got it's fresh off the news wire. Uh, actually, the news is a dude. This is a dude, a guy. Listen, here's how crazy people are. A guy chugged a half a gallon of whiskey in 55 seconds. And he learns a hard way about alcohol poisoning. He was doing it for, I don't know if it's TikTok or YouTube, maybe both. Just a guy uh, thinking he's invincible. You know, alcohol is not going to hurt me. Hey, look, I drank six beers in one sitting. It's a, this six beers in one sitting, not the first time, um, for my last podcast. And I, and I didn't even get buzzed. Nothing happened. This guy, almost immediately, 30 seconds after, he starts throwing up. Gets alcohol poisoning. Says he's, it was wrong. Never going to do it again. But it's all documented now on YouTube. His partner thought he was kidding when he did it. Kidding? Did I say kidding? Where did I get that? Kidding when he did it and was laughing. Uh, but he he wasn't laughing. That's dangerous, people. Uh, fortunately, he didn't die. He could have died, I guess, right? Jeez. All right. Um, here's oh, this one makes me mad. Uh, a pastor accused of 1.3 million crypto scams says God told him to do it. What's going on with the, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to get into this, but I'm just so tired of people who claim to be the representation of religion, Christianity, whatever, Hinduism, Buddhism, Mormons, the people always that are in the top leadership, they're the goofy ones. They're the ones that don't need to be there. They're the ones that are misrepresenting and embarrassing everyone else. How did they get there? These are people that just learn how to scam. They learn how to cheat. They learn how to weasel their way up so that they could be at the top and they can skim the money off the top. Just like this person uh, started his own. Uh, I don't know enough about crypto stuff, but he started his own cryptocurrency. Um, and he said, God told him to do it. And God told him once people invested, God told him to take that money and put it into his own house because it was an investment, God said. And uh, the guy uh, going to jail now, he remodeled his home with people's money who were invested in, in, in a, a scam cryptocurrency. And in the end, he blames God for it. You know what? If that's your God, it's time to start looking for another one. That's what I say. Okay. 
All right, last news uh, item. A man runs a um, marathon. I don't, what is this? Sub 3.30, what is that? Um, marathon while chain smoking a pack of cigarettes. There's a Chinese guy and goes by the name of Uncle Chen. And he said he only smokes when he runs. And he runs the marathon and smokes a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> The guy actually did pretty well out of 1,500 people who were running in the um, marathon. He placed 575th. Clocked in at 328. I guess that's three hours and 28. That's a lot of cigarettes in three hours. Three hours and 28. I don't know. I don't. I could smoke. I could smoke, I don't know, I couldn't do it right now, but I could smoke a pack of cigarettes, chain smoke them one after the other. I've done it. It would be hard to do now. I haven't smoked in a long time. Uh, it might be like the guy chugging the whiskey. I'd probably, I'd get, I'd vomit. I'd be, I'd get sick. I could do that, but I couldn't do it while running. I, I don't know what I could do while running. I couldn't even run while running. I couldn't, uh, running's not my thing, but. But this was um, an interesting thing because um, the other day my wife and I were uh, driving uh, home and there's a guy running on the side of the road smoking a cigarette. And we just cracked up. We're like, what is this guy doing? Smoking a cigarette while running. Okay. Got to do something, right? He looked like he was having a good time. All right. I'm not I'm not purposely doing a bad show. If it's bad, it's not purposely. I'm I'm working hard to make this a good show. Okay. This has got some things that are working against me. Uh let me just describe my desk right here. I have on my desk right now, this is this is true. I have uh, uh prayer beads, mala. I have a bowl of juggling balls. Um beanbag style and lacrosse purple lacrosse juggling balls uh in a, a clear acrylic bowl i have uh three kilt koozies as you know we've talked about that and um i have one two three four christian comedy tapes right here on my desk uh-huh that's what that's what my desk looks like how about yours don't ask me why i have all that stuff it's all for a purpose. I'm doing stuff, but it's here. All right, here's the story. Um, in high school, this would be uh, 1979. That's what year this is. 1979. I was in the band. I was in. Uh, I went. I, I went to a school. Had we had a really large band. Um, I think uh, there were a few hundred people in the band. Can't remember. I think I want to say you're in the five, five hundred, but that might be over. As I can't remember now. But anyway, but the band had a reputation. We were really good. We got invited to a lot of places. We got to march in Mardi Gras, which was so much fun. Long, long parade, cold, um, and I was young. I I wish that I was older. I could have appreciated Mardi Gras more. But it was fun just being there. The atmosphere was really fun. Um, it hurt your legs and feet hurt after a while. But we did it. It was great. We got invited to uh, Mexico to play for the government in Mexico. There was some festival or something, and they wanted to hear our band. I don't know how that um, got promoted down there. But anyway, we got the invitation. We went. It was a great thing. It was the first time I ever flew on a plane. And um, I don't remember how long it was. Four hours? Five but it was fun. You get down in Mexico, it's, um, you're, as a kid, it's a lot like, you know, it's a big city, a lot, it's very, very smoggy, very, uh, lots, lots of, um, as I recall, lots of exhaust in the air. I was, I remember it just seemed like everybody drove a little Volkswagen bug. That was the, that, all the taxis were little VW bugs. And, um, yeah, but it was kind of cool. And then we stayed in this big hotel. They put us up in a hotel and that was fun. And the hotel had a big 
uh, um, uh, restaurant down at the bottom, and there was a little disco not too far. Disco. It was the 70s. It was an actual disco. I discoed. I discoed. Um, attractive women asked me to disco with them, and I did. Hey, I was young. I was in high school. So that was kind of fun. And um, I, I think we were on like the third, third or fourth floor. Now, here's what I noticed about the um, hotel in Mexico. We were in Mexico City. And there was a gap in between the floor and the window in the hotel room. So if you look down that gap, you would see down into the floor below us. It was just about, what, two and in three inches. And I assumed at the time, and I still kind of think maybe, that it's a built-in uh, architectural thing because there's, you know, earthquakes happen frequently in Mexico, Mexico City. And it's to keep, you know, the wobbling and the things, right, you know, to kind of keep the stuff from breaking windows. I don't know. Give everybody a little chance to move, I guess. I don't know if that's the purpose of it, but that was there. And you could see straight down to the bottom room if you wanted to. You had to look, but it, it's there. And one day we noticed that. Let me just let me kind of set this up. There was a guy in my room. I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you his name. Uh, let's go with the name Greg. I will say Greg. Greg was in my room. Now, here's the thing about Greg. Greg was in my uh, my little uh, crew that I sort of ran around in with. Um, and Greg was the, the guy. Greg was the guy that I, I could always. He would always do the things that I would create. Right. So I was like the writer and he was like the comic. So he would perform whatever I wrote. And that was that was magic <laughs> because I didn't want to get in trouble. And Greg didn't care to get in trouble. That was uh, he. And I don't even think he thought about it. And so I would just say, oh, wouldn't it be funny if you blah, 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 blah. And he would blah, 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 blah. Because I said it, he would think, oh, that sounds like fun. So it was great. I didn't get in trouble. But I got to see it happen. So um, I don't know who had the condom, but someone had one. Now we're high school boys, high school got high school men, and someone's got a condom. I don't know what they they're not going to use it. Who's going to use it? No one was using that. We just carried them around until they broke. It was a thing. You wanted people to see it. Someone produced a condom. And we thought that was kind of funny. And we noticed underneath our room, directly in the room below us, it sounded like a party was going on. And it sounded like a kid's party, like a birthday party. And so tons and tons of kids were down there. We don't know what they were doing. They're speaking Spanish. How do we know? We just hear lots and lots of kids doing. I'm not going to do the Spanish. I could pretend like I'm speaking Spanish and then I'm going to get in trouble. People are going to say that I'm making fun of. I love Spanish. I'm not making fun. Even though I would do it. Um, so, you know, we're trying to communicate with the kids. And we start hollowing down the little crack in the wall, you know, yelling down there, hey, hey, whatever. I think we had we had learned some phrases. And uh, I believe uh, Greg had learned me gusta, which means I like it or I like that or whatever. And so Greg is going, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta, over and over and over because that's the only words he knows. And the kids are going crazy. They're yelling up at us. They hear us and they're laughing and screaming. And um, someone has a little, uh, like a like a straw, drinking straw, and um, <coughs> they decide, excuse me, they decide to poke a little hole in the condom package and put that straw in it and just kind of hold that condom down. And I don't. This is high school people. It doesn't. <laughs> it's not going to make sense to you. We're going to kind of 
dangle it down that little uh, crack until it shows up in their room. And he's he's kind of waving it around, going, me gusta, me gusta, me gusta. And the kids are going, ah, see, that's my Spanish. It's not real. If I said anything to offend anybody in real Spanish, I apologize. It was an accident. So that, it's just, it's dumb. We think it's hysterical. The kids are loving it. It's great. So uh, I don't know. Me, somebody said, hey, we need to pull, we need to stop this. We're going to get in trouble. So uh, Greg pulls the straw up. And when he does, <laughs> the condom slips off the straw and falls down into the room. And the kids go crazy. And we think it's really, really funny. Um, and so we laugh and, you know, whatever. And then I guess we're distracted. We go off and do something else. The kids do something and whatever. And we kind of forget about it a little bit. Next morning, uh, we're going down for breakfast. We get on the elevator. The elevator opens. There's a ton of kids. And they've got this condom blown up like a balloon. Um, and <laughs> throwing it around to each other. It's the size of a basketball with a little nipple on it. And they're just popping it around and just uh, saying a bunch of stuff. We don't know what they're saying. And we can't get on the elevator because we're laughing so hard. So we let the elevator go on. Catch another elevator. Go have breakfast. Um, all of a sudden, we get called to an emergency band meeting. And... The band director is pissed. He's more pissed than me that today. He's he's a lot more pissy than I am. And uh, very serious, solemn. I don't know, though. I, I detected a little grin on the corner of his mouth. I think he thought it was just as funny as we did. Can you imagine having to talk to kids about this stuff? But he tried to be really serious. This is an incident. It's really big and it's very serious and we're in big trouble. Of course, Mexico um, generally is a Catholic country, you know, that I don't know if it's official, but almost everybody's Catholic. And so birth control is not something that uh, they want their kids to be exposed to. And most people don't, no matter what you're background is at that age you know you don't want your four five and six year olds blowing up a condom the size of a basketball going me gusta, me gusta. um so you know he just he's like i need to know who did this and then of course everybody's looking here and here and back and forth i don't know and then he i don't know why but he <laughs> he looks right at me and says Mr. Baldwin, do you know who did this? I guess he thought I was, I maybe he thought I'm a rat or I'm an honest person. I don't know. One of the two. And I, I was like, uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> and I can't remember now. I can't remember if I read it. I don't know. But anyway, the information got out. We know who did it. He knows who did it. We all know who did We all knew anyway who did it. So we had to uh, apologize and uh, do a formal apology. And I don't, I think Greg had to go do something in person. I don't know what he did, but fortunately, I guess they thought kids today and let us go. They didn't throw us out of Mexico. <laughs> um, I, but somewhere there's a there's a group of kids. They're all now, well, let's say they're in their forties maybe, and they're all corrupted. They're in they've gotten into a life of crime, drugs, alcohol, prostitution, all because some band people dropped a condom in their room and corrupted them forever. All right. That's how I almost got thrown out of Mexico, people. Um, that's a true story. <laughs> okay. We all have our little stories, right? I, I do. Mexico is great. Loved Mexico. I, I have some great memories uh, of Mexico. 
I hated the flight down there. I almost threw up. It was a lot of um, turbulence. It was my first plane ride. I was scared to death. Hated it. The coming back, the exact opposite. It was like just floating. And a clear day, you could see all the way down the entire time. You could see everything. I, I think I would have appreciated it more today. I would have looked out the window and, and looked at all the stuff. I think I, I, I think I would have been capable of doing that. I, I couldn't have handled the turbulence now. I, that would be, uh, I'm not good with motion, anything motion. I have a certain amount of vertigo and I I can't do carnival rides or anything like that. So any, if any kind of thing like that, if I'm a, on a plane and, and uh, that kind of stuff starts happening, I'm probably going to lose lose my lunch. Yeah. But a, uh, but a smooth flight. I think I would appreciate that a lot more. I wished um, I wasn't so young. I, we saw a lot of stuff that I think I would appreciate more as a grown-up. But I did see uh, the most horrible poverty that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I, we saw uh, like a, a city, uh, a cardboard city. It was just row after row after row as far as you could see with your eyes of people living in boxes, just cardboard boxes. It, it was heartbreaking. I'd never seen that before as a child. Uh, and it makes you think, whoa, that's these people are living like that. Holy crap. Uh, so we threw him a condom. <laughs> no, we didn't. We did not. We didn't do it. All right. Hey, people, look, thank you for joining me. You don't know how much I appreciate it. I, I, I do these shows like these are free. I do them free. Cost me a little bit to make them. I put them out. I don't charge you. I'm, right now, I'm not doing ads. I don't know if I'll ever do ads. Who wants to buy anything off of this podcast? I'm not going to do any ads. So I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm not asking you to buy anything. I just I, I just hope to entertain you. And it's kind of cool if you do get entertained, if you enjoy it, if you reach out and say, um, thanks. I heard it. I liked it. I didn't like it. Here's some suggestions. All that stuff helps me. I don't take it personally if you want to make some suggestions. I don't know that I'll do them. Sometimes I might. But it's good to know good that you enjoy it and uh, it helps me in planning, right? Did you like my new little news thing? I thought that was cool. So whenever I do news, you know, that'll be our little... Inter do you want to hear it again? Let's hear it again. Let's, we'll, we'll do... Uh, we'll, the, just... I'm going to do quick news. Here we go. Um, this will, Let's just pretend. All right. All right, uh, let's take a look at the news. Yeah, that's a great news thing. Um, it's a little bit 80s. But whatever. I'm a little bit 80s, okay? <laughs> Let's get out of here. I, I'm having way uh, crazy fun. Mm. All right, go uh, play with your condoms and uh, yell, Megusta! Megusta!